apply the four patient safety straps around both tabletops. Secure one over the center of the head support plate, one at the center of the chest pad, one centered between the hip and thigh pads, and one in the center of the leg boards or leg board if only one is used. Place all buckles on the same side of the table for easy access. The next step is to compress the patient between the tops to ensure that the patient is held securely in place during rotation. Release the Jackson Spinal Surgery tabletop from the head end removable H-frame by removing the upper T-pin and lower the head end until the weight of the tabletop rests on the patient. Resecure the Jackson tabletop in the mounting hole nearest to this level at the head end removable H-frame with a T-pin. Now at the foot end, remove the upper T-pin that is holding the tabletop to the removable H-frame. Then lower the foot of the Jackson tabletop until the thigh pads compress against the patient and a crease appears in the pad. Now re-secure the tabletop at this level to the foot end removable H-frame with the T-pin. Retighten the four safety straps to remove any slack. The lead attendant at the head end will check the foot end of the table to verify that each of the four locking pins and the four safety straps are secured in their proper positions by counting aloud foot end pins. One, two, three, four. Straps. One, two, three, four. The same attendant will then check the head end of the table to verify that each of the four frame locking pins are secured in place by using the same verbal counting check. Head end pins. One, two, three, four. Only one attendant should be responsible for checking all of the pins and straps. Failure to verify that all locking pins and straps are fully engaged and in their locked position may result in the patient being dropped. With an attendant at both ends, the attending physician will then grip the Jackson tabletop securely at the center of the frame and instruct the attendants at the head and foot ends to release the transfer locks. The attendant at the foot end, while holding the table securely, will release the rotational friction control lock then the patient transfer safety lock. The attendant at the head end, while holding the frame securely, will then release the rotational friction control, the patient transfer safety lock, and the 25 degree rotational stop. Care should be used by the anesthesiologist to control the breathing hoses and drip lines during the rotation process. The anesthesiologist, when ready, will advise the physician to rotate the table. Making sure the physician is holding the frame securely, the attendants at the head and foot ends will release the table and step back. The attending physician will then rotate the patient 180 degrees. The patient should be rotated in one smooth continuous motion until they are in the prone position. Attendants at the head and foot ends will immediately engage the patient transfer safety locks and retighten the rotational friction controls to maximum friction, then lock the 25 degree rotational stop at the head end of the table. After the patient has been rotated, remove the upper T-pins that secure the imaging top to the removable H-frame at both the head and foot ends of the table. Then remove the chest pad safety strap, leaving the other three safety straps in place. Now attach the armboard brackets to the Jackson Spinal Tabletop, positioning the brackets either above or below the head support plate based on the procedure to be performed. Position the brackets below the head plate for cervical procedures and above the head plate for spinal procedures. This will ensure complete radiolucency in the surgical area. Attach the armboards to the armboard brackets Then secure the patient's arms to the arm boards with the closure straps provided.
Next, two attendants, one at each end of the table, will hold the imaging tabletop in place while a third attendant removes the remaining three safety straps. The attendant at the foot end then removes the upper foot end removable H-frame. The attendants at each end of the table will lift the radiolucent imaging top away and store it on the cart. Remove the head end upper H frame. The patient will normally be in a slight Trandellenburg position as a result of the rotation and the patient should be brought into a level position. Then place a blanket over the patient's legs and buttocks. and secure the patient's legs to the frame with a safety strap positioned at the knee level. The buttock strap is applied across the lower gluteal area. It is recommended that padding be placed between the buttock strap and the patient's skin. The strap is positioned forward of the hips around the rail on the superior side of the hip pads and back into the corresponding buckle. It is important that the buttock strap be snug enough to prevent distal migration of the patient during surgery. Be sure the buttock strap is low on the gluteal area, surrounds both the hip and thigh pads, and is positioned snugly around the buttocks. If the surgeon would like greater hip flexion, the leg sling may be installed prior to placing the patient on the table. The buttock strap is always used in conjunction with this sling. If it is determined ahead of time that the leg sling will be used, the surgeon may elect not to use thigh pads, allowing for even greater hip flexion. If the leg sling is used, after rotating the patient, two attendants will remove the patient's safety strap and support the patient's legs while a third attendant removes the pillows and leg boards and positions the leg sling in place. The same attendant will then place pillows and gel as required into the leg sling position the patient's lower legs into the sling and adjust the sling straps to the desired hip flexion angle. The two attendants will then reapply the patient safety strap. If the thigh pads are left on and greater flexion is required, the thigh pads can be removed by releasing the buttock strap. Rolling the patient to one side of the table, unlocking and removing the thigh pad, rolling the patient to the other side of the table, and removing the other thigh pad using the same procedure. Then reapply the buttock strap as instructed previously to prevent migration. This concludes the demonstration on table rotation. 
In the following segment, we will demonstrate how to set up the Radio Lucent Imaging Tabletop. Because of the dual pedestal base and carbon fiber imaging tabletop, the Radio Lucent Imaging Tabletop allows 360 degrees unobstructed visualization of patients throughout their entire length. The Radio Lucent Imaging Tabletop is not only used as the transfer top during rotation, it is also used as the tabletop for the OSI Pelvic Reconstruction Kit. A variety of procedures may be performed using this tabletop. The Radio Lucent side rails will accept side rail sockets, Clark sockets, and conventional arm boards. Radio Lucent imaging tops, shipped after February 1, 1997, incorporate a gimbals feature that allows simultaneous Trendelenburg and lateral tilt. This feature may be incorporated into older radio lucent imaging tabletops. Support braces are available to secure the patient when using this feature. This concludes the demonstration of the radio lucent imaging tabletop. In the following segment, we will demonstrate various setups for cervical management of the patient on the Jackson Spinal Table System. The Jackson Spinal System adapts well to most methods of stabilizing a patient's head and cervical area. The use of either a cervical head halter or Gardner Wells type tongs with weight traction requires that a traction cord weight hanger and weight be used. For use of either, after transferring the patient to the tabletop, if it is not already in place, attach the cervical head halter. Then attach the traction cord to the S-hook and through the receiver hole in the center crossbar. If flexion or extension is required, the traction vector can be used to set the required angle by inserting the traction vector into the appropriate holes in the H-frame and running the traction cord over the top or under the traction vector and then through the traction receiver hole in the center crossbar then over the head end pulley and attach the other end of the rope to the weight carrier and then attach the desired amount of weight. If necessary you may continue and rotate the patient as previously demonstrated. The coupler assembly for the Jackson spinal surgery top provides the surgeon with greater flexibility to rotate, laterally translate, flex, and extend the cervical spine of the patient. Before installing the coupler assembly, verify that all frame T-pins and straps are secured in their proper positions, and verify that the armboard brackets are attached at the lower edge of the chest pad to ensure that there will be enough space for the coupler assembly to be mounted to the tabletop. Next, attach one adapter bracket to the spinal surgery top at the head end corner. Then insert the Mayfield assembly into the bracket and tighten the coupler assembly. Then attach the second adapter bracket to the Jackson frame and over the crossbar end and tighten the coupler assembly. Both Bremer and PMT provide adapters to fit OSI's coupler assembly. halo ring and adapter, Mayfield tongs,
and the horseshoe headrest. Follow standard compression procedures, then make final adjustments on the horseshoe headrest, Mayfield tongs, or halo ring. The patient is in a compressed state, so work as quickly and efficiently as possible and ensure that the device is centered and positioned safely. It may be necessary to position the arm board brackets below the chest pad instead of above to ensure complete radiolucency in the cervical area and to allow complete intraoperative access for the surgeon. Before rotating the patient, verify that all frame T-pins and straps are secured in their proper positions then rotate the patient. An X-ray AP cassette tray is available for the Jackson Spinal Surgery Top. This tray provides an adaptable support platform for X-ray cassettes for use with AP interoperative radiographic imaging. The AP cassette support bracket with a narrow channel adapter on one side and a wide channel adapter on the other is designed to fit all modular table tops. The wider channel will fit the side rails of the Jackson Spinal Surgery top. The narrow channel will fit the side rails of the Radiolucent Imaging top. The cassette tray is designed to hold a maximum of a 14-inch by 17-inch cassette. However, it can be easily adapted to hold custom-sized cassettes. The twist knob in the back can be loosened and the corner stops can be repositioned to accommodate other cassette sizes. After adjusting the cassette tray to fit the size of the cassette being used, attach the AP cassette support bracket to the tabletop, then attach the cassette tray to the AP cassette support bracket, place the cassette into the cassette tray and lock it in place. This concludes the in-service section relating to the Jackson Spinal Surgery Table. Now we will demonstrate the Maximum Access Lateral Tabletop. The Maximum Access Lateral Tabletop was designed with versatility in mind. This unique bottle-shaped top can be positioned in either the A or B position for improved patient access. In the A position, Patients may be positioned for simultaneous anterior-posterior spinal procedures, thoracotomies, and or thoracopies, while allowing up to 90 degrees of rotation in either direction. It is also designed to be used for total hip procedures, providing total support of patients in the lateral position. In the B position, patients can be positioned for total hip and other MIS procedures. In the following segment, we will demonstrate how to set up the maximum access lateral tabletop for simultaneous anterior-posterior spinal procedures. Attach the maximum access lateral top to the modular base for spinal procedures, the A position. Engage the patient transfer safety locks and the rotational friction controls at the head and foot ends of the table base and verify that the 25 degree rotational stop at the head end is engaged. Attach the removable H-frame to the bottom of both the head and foot end crossbars and secure with a T-pin. Then attach the lateral tabletop with the nine and a half inch wide section directed toward the head end to the removable H-frames at each end by inserting a T-pin through the H-frame in the sixth open hole down from the crossbar and then through the round connector of the lateral tabletop and then out the opposite side of the H-frame. Next, remove any clamps or accessories that may be attached to the tabletop except the patient transfer boards. If the transfer boards are not already in place, insert the transfer boards into the head-end receivers from below 
and raise them until they are level with the table. With the locking mechanism just lateral to the lateral tabletop, push the transfer boards medially toward the table until they are locked. Then check security by pulling laterally on each transfer board. Apply patient care kit covers contained in the patient care kit to all pads that are going to be used. Then attach the lower arm board to the bracket located on the underside of the lateral tabletop at the head end with the arm board directed toward the side the patient will be facing. Secure the arm board by tightening the T-handle lock. Next, check security of the arm board. Then attach the head support base bracket to the lateral tabletop by sliding it over the head end gimbal handle until it locks in place with a click. Verify that the head support base bracket is secure. The table is now ready to receive a patient. Transfer the patient to the lateral tabletop in a supine position with the patient's head at the head end of the table. Adjust the patient's position so that there is approximately four inches between the top of the head support base bracket and the top of the patient's head. Then insert the IV arm boards between the transfer board tops and the patient transfer board pads on both sides of the tabletop. Push the IV arm boards medially until they are secure under the patient's arms. Apply the disposable pads contained in the patient care kit to the arm boards, then position the patient's arms in the arm boards. If the patient has not already been anesthetized, it should be done at this time. Remove the two IV arm boards. Then roll the patient into a lateral position to the appropriate side. Carefully position the patient's hip, greater trochanter, and shoulder, humeral head, of the downside directly on the midline of the tabletop. Then place a gentle touch headrest pillow contained in the patient care kit under the patient's head. If an optional inflatable bolster will be used, it should be positioned under the patient at this time. Position the optional axilla roll under the patient if required. At this time, an attendant should be assigned to support the patient until the pelvis is secured. Attach one tabletop clamp to each side of the table approximately at the mid-thigh position and secure in place utilizing the three-spoked handle. Then attach the iliac pubic pad to the iliac sacral mount assembly and insert the iliac sacral mount assembly with the iliac pubic pad attached into the tabletop clamp on the anterior side of the patient. Position the pad against the patient's iliac crest. Secure it vertically with the black plastic locking knob on the table clamp and laterally with the flat aluminum knob located on the mount assembly. Now attach a sacral pad to the other iliac sacral mount assembly and insert the iliac sacral mount assembly with the sacral pad attached into the table clamp on the posterior side of the patient. Position the pad against the sacrum and secure it in place vertically with the black plastic locking knob on the table clamp and laterally with the flat aluminum knob located on the mount assembly. Now slide the chest scapula mount assembly onto the accessory rail at the head end of the lateral tabletop on the patient's anterior side and secure with the locking knob. Use caution as the chest scapula mount assembly slides into position to ensure that it will not impact the patient's face. Then attach a chest pad to the chest scapula mount assembly. Position the chest pad to the midline of the patient's sternum utilizing the vertical adjustment knob and with the superior edge of the pad at the patient's suprasternal notch Secure it with the lateral locking knob. The attendant should hold the upper arm until the patient's head has been secured. Slide the chest scapula mount assembly onto the accessory rail located at the head end of the lateral tabletop on the patient's posterior side and secure with the locking knob. 
Then attach a scapula pad to the chest scapula mount assembly. Adjust the height of the pad with the vertical height adjustment knob so that the pad is between the scapula with the superior edge of the pad approximately at the level of C7. Then secure the scapula pad against the patient with the lateral locking knob. Remove the patient transfer boards by depressing the red lever and pulling out, down, and then footward to remove the boards. Now adjust the lower arm board and secure the patient's arms with the straps contained in the patient care kit. Flex the patient's knees, place a pillow between the legs at the knees, then attach a gel safety strap around the tabletop and around the patient's thigh, just distal to the pubic and sacral pads. Next, attach the head support assembly to the head support base bracket, then adjust the three head pads as necessary to support the head. The lateral headrest pad should be located against the patient's head approximately three quarters of an inch above the ear. The posterior headrest pad should be centered over the occipital protuberance and the inferior edge of the anterior headrest pad should be positioned at the eyebrows. Avoid contact with the patient's eyes. Verify that the C-spine is straight and verify that the patient's head, ear, is centered on the nine and a half inch wide table section. Now insert the upper arm support into the chest scapula mount assembly. Adjust the upper arm support to support the patient's upper arm at the proper height. Rotate the arm support to maximize access to the face and lock it with the clamp knob. Now secure the patient's upper arm to the arm support with the two